Hi, I am Dieter Deibler and I will now give you a short lecture on atmospheric chemistry. Our atmosphere contains about 2.4 times 10 to the power of 19 molecules in every cubic centimeter at sea level. About 99% of our atmosphere consists of dinitrogen and dioxygen, while the remaining 1% is composed of many, many different gases and aerosol particles. Most of the very abundant gases are very unreactive, which is for example also the case for carbon dioxide, which only interacts with light. In order to know which compounds will react with each other in the atmosphere, we need to know which compounds are present, what are their concentrations, and how reactive are they towards each other. Sources of a compound in the atmosphere include chemical reactions, which means that two compounds will react with each other to form our compound of interest. Photolysis, meaning that a compound will interact with light in order to form our compound of interest. Emissions, for example from forest and industry. And meteorological transport. While sinks, so the processes that remove a compound, includes chemical reactions, photolysis, transport and deposition. When studying atmospheric chemistry, we also need to consider meteorology. We need to consider the various mixing time scales in connection with atmospheric lifetimes. The slide depicts the approximate time scales for horizontal transport in the troposphere. If sulfur dioxide is, for example, emitted from a factory in eastern US, it will be able to reach eastern Asia within a time scale of about two weeks. While it will probably take about one week or so for a compound emitted in eastern Asia to reach the US, due to the direction of the transport. It will take about one to two months for a compound emitted at around a latitude of 40 degrees to reach either the North Pole or the Equator, while it would take significantly longer to reach the South Pole as the compound needs to pass the intertropical convergence zone. The slide depicts the approximate time scales for vertical transport in the atmosphere. If a compound is emitted from the Earth's surface, it will take a few hours to reach the top of the boundary layer and longer to penetrate further up in the atmosphere as mixing becomes slower with an increase in altitude. Lifetime is the time a molecule resides in the atmosphere until it's removed by a process. Such process could be a chemical reaction, photolysis or deposition. The chemical lifetime is the time a molecule resides in the atmosphere until it's removed by specifically a chemical reaction and the chemical lifetime of a compound is not influenced by the concentration of the compound itself. The lifetime is very specific for individual compounds, and some examples are provided on the slide. Photolysis is the interaction between a compound and solar radiation that leads to a chemical reaction. Solar radiation is the source of energy that can break a chemical bond if sufficient amount of energy is provided. A few examples of photolysis are shown on the slide. The nitrate radical photodissociates into different products depending on the energy of the light absorbed. Photolysis of ozone is very important since it is the first step in the formation chain of the hydroxyl radical. Photolysis is very central in atmospheric chemistry as it is the only source of several important gases in the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is very special as it is a strong oxidizing medium. Oxidation can be described as a loss of electrons, while reduction, which happens simultaneously and is the opposite of oxidation, can be described as a gain of electrons. An oxidant is then a chemical species with a desire to obtain more electrons. Examples are the OH radical, ozone and nitrate radical. And a reducing agent is a chemical species with a desire to get rid of electrons. Since an actual transfer of electrons may never occur, it is more precise to say that oxidation equals an increase in oxidation state, while reduction equals a decrease in oxidation state. And oxidation states determine the degree of oxidation. Thus, an element in a compound is emitted from Earth in a reduced state, for example, carbon in methane emitted, for example, from peatlands, is in oxidation state minus 4, 
During its time in the atmosphere, it will undergo oxidation. In case of methane, this oxidation is driven by the OH radical. And in the end, CO2 is produced where carbon is found in the oxidation state of plus 4. There are several oxidants in the atmosphere, with OH, NO3 and ozone being the most important. The oxidants are not equally important at all times, and they do not necessarily react with the same compounds. The hydroxyl radical is considered the atmospheric cleaning agent. It is a radical, which means that it has a lone or unpaired electron. OH is mainly produced by photolysis of ozone. It is the most reactive oxidant, and it's short-lived with a lifetime of significantly less than one second. The nitrate radical is also a radical. It is less reactive than OH. It is produced from NO2 and ozone. It is photolyzed during day, and it is short-lived with a lifetime of about 10 seconds or so. Ozone is not a radical, and it's less reactive than both OH and NO3, but its concentration in the atmosphere is much higher than that of OH and NO3. The production of ozone depends on the relative concentration of NOx and hydrocarbons, and it does not necessarily have a clear daily pattern. I will now give a few examples of atmospheric oxidation. The first concerns the atmospheric oxidation of sulfur dioxide. SO2 is mainly emitted from various anthropogenic sources due to fossil fuel burning, but there also exist biogenic sources such as volcanic activity. SO2 reacts both via gas and aqueous phase chemistry in the troposphere and is also removed by dry and wet deposition. With respect to gas phase reactions, reaction with the OH radical is dominant. On the slides, I'm showing the homogeneous oxidation of SO2, which accounts for more than half of the total SO2 processing. However, SO2 also undergoes heterogeneous oxidation by aqueous hydrogen peroxide, which is not shown here. The first step is the rate-limited step where sulfur is being oxidized by OH. Sulfur in SO2 goes from an oxidation state of plus 4 to an oxidation state of plus 5 in HSO3. In this reaction, sulfur is being oxidized while the oxygen in OH is being reduced. Oxidation states of radicals aren't very well defined and plus 5 is not an existing oxidation state for stable sulfur compounds. But for illustrative purposes, to show you how the oxidation number goes up along the oxidation chain, I have here given sulfur in HSO3 the oxidation state of plus 5. M is a third body, most likely a dinitrogen or dioxygen, removing excess energy. The second step is a fast reaction where sulfur in HSO3 is being oxidized by O2. Sulfur in HSO3 goes from an oxidation state of plus 5 to an oxidation state of plus 6 in sulfur trioxide. In this reaction, sulfur is being oxidized, while one of the oxygens in dioxygen is being reduced. The third step is also a fast reaction, but it's not a redox reaction, and sulfur keeps its oxidation state of plus 6. In this reaction, M' prime is most often water. Since sulfuric acid has a low vapor pressure, it condenses immediately when formed in the gas phase. Nitrogen oxides are involved with several cycles and reactions in the atmosphere, and I will show some of the key reactions here, but please be aware that there are also other important reactions concerning NOx that are not shown here. In this reaction, nitrogen is oxidized by hydroperoxyl radical and goes from an oxidation state of plus 2 to plus 4, while one of the oxygens in HO2 is being reduced and goes from oxidation state 0 to minus 2. In this reaction, nitrogen in nitrogen monoxide is again being oxidized, this time by ozone. One of the oxygens in ozone is simultaneously being reduced from oxidation state 0 to minus 2. The next reaction is a photolysis reaction, and in this reaction, Nitrogen is being reduced and changes oxidation state from plus 4 to plus 2. In this reaction, nitrogen in nitrogen dioxide is oxidized by a hydroxyl radical. 
and nitrogen goes from oxidation state plus 4 to plus 5 in nitric acid. The oxygen in the hydroxyl radical has been reduced from oxidation state minus 1 to minus 2 in nitric acid. The emitted nitrogen oxides are then lost from the gas phase as nitric acid is a very water-soluble gas. 